Hello everyone, my name is Gus. Hi, I'm Woody. And today we have an outrageous hat, by the way. What what, what are you wearing? Oh. I'm just, oh, this, this. Yes. This was made by my friend from England, Janet Pryor. This is a shark. Today, would, I thought, why, it's a shark hat. But we're not even talking I about sharks. I love them. And Crocs. I'm just, I, I'm just asking on behalf of people because I know if I don't ask... 75% of the comments will be, what the hell? And on behalf the of the sharks, because those are also mm. intelligent animals that I communicate with, right. I just wanted to show how much I love them. This is a pink shark hat made by my friend Janet Pryor in England. Shout out to so Janet. So it's a pretty clear explanation. That's logical. Um, okay. Um, so today we have an interesting, interesting one. I don't know if you've ever watched. There's a viral video. By the way, there's a viral video called Leprechaun in Mobile, Alabama. Have you ever watched okay. that video? Mm -mm. All right. So for those of you who haven't watched this video, first of all, shame on you because it's a great video. <laughs> okay. um, I'm going to link it on top so okay. you, can, you can watch it after this if you want to. But it's this outrageous story that people saw a leprechaun in Mobile, Alabama. Maybe. I mean, no. Why do you say outrageous automatically? Because yeah. it's ridiculous, right? It's nonsense. But anyway, so but it's hilarious because they managed Maybe. to interview, you know, some interesting people in Mobile. I'm and just they really leave. believe that. They're... Absolutely. 100%. We saw it. Okay. I saw the leprechaun. Okay. And you, it's hilarious. Anyway, so I don't know why in the south of the United States, these stories keep popping up. And they are just completely outraged. Out of control. Just like, what are you talking about? And not, I'm sure there's a lot of people in the South that like believe this stuff. But the fact that a news channel, a TV news channel decided that, you know what? This has some merit. Let's put him on TV. But I may. It's mind blowing. What, I may actually agree with the, that it could well, have some merit. I don't know. I don't. What I'm saying is I don't you know. You have no idea about this. But I okay. watched it and I'm like, we have. Have to talk about this. I look forward to it. This is insane. Okay. Let's I've give not it seen it, so I'm gonna I'm open minded, everybody. For you fire <laughs> comments out. Let's just let's just be open minded okay. and we'll all react for uh, what it is. I don't know how respectful I can be on this one, but let's see. An amateur archaeologist says he's discovered the ruins of an ancient civilization off the coast of St. Bernard Parish. He That's claims there are large fine. mounds <laughs> underwater that may have once been the site of a lost city thousands of years ago. Paul Murphy reports local fishermen have long talked about strange and unexplained things happening in that area. All right. This is... The Chandelier Islands are a chain of uninhabited barrier islands located in the Gulf of Mexico, 50 miles east of New Orleans. Yes. But 12,000 years ago, before a dramatic sea level rise at the end of the last ice age, this area may have been dry land. Three different search areas. Absolutely. Retired architect and amateur archaeologist George Gillet believes the site, now underwater, was once home to an ancient civilization. <laughs> He dubbed the city Crescentus. What? Why are you? Now I'm asking the question. Why are you laughing? I mean, what let the mean? video play. There's not one thing there that is not reasonable yet. 12,000 years ago. Yes. And not only that, I just saw a news report from satellites that the lost city of Atlantis, oh, no, that remaining no. circle in the Sahara Desert. No. Because the Sahara Desert was all wet and whatever. That was the lost city of Atlantis. Was Now it's all dry. Where are you watching this stuff? YouTube. Oh, my God. Okay, let's continue. But I, I, don't, I just had to stop it. I don't know what he's laughing about. That Nothing is unreasonable yet. Down there is hundreds of buildings that are covered with sand and silt and that are geographically related to the Great Pyramid of Giza. <laughs> Giza is a city in northern Egypt what? where ancient pyramids and the Sphinx are located. Jalay claims to have found mysterious mounds of granite under Chandelier Sound. Well, what is granite that? is not native to Louisiana granite. or Mississippi. Somebody floated a uh, billion stones down the Mississippi River and then stones. assembled them outside of what would later become New Orleans. Jalay has spent nearly 50 years studying the site. 
he produced underwater sonar images of what he claims are remnants of major buildings, including a large pyramid. Okay. Dude, just Wait just a stop. second. Okay, just stop. Stop. What is this? Stop it. Stop I'm it. just saying, no, I'm not no. joking either. No. What this is cr I never knew this. Because it's this is what are you what talking are about? What are those things? That's all I'm asking. Right it's now, a I'm asking. It's a pile of rocks. Granite like that? Giant, big, it, that not in that air? I don't know. Everybody. Okay, I got to watch. This guy, hold I on. Actually, I'm Wait, no, no. Fascinated. Because I think, I, I feel like you pro you're probably not understanding what he's talking about. Okay. This guy's talking about an ancient civilization mm -hmm. 12,000 years ago, mm -hmm. right? That somehow built an Egyptian pyramid in like 50 miles into the coast. Like, no, don't worry about I it. Like, know. I know you can't see a pyramid, but it's, trust me. I know this. I'm an amateur archaeologist. Under all the silt, I swear, there's well, a giant pyramid. I just watched something Bro. on the pyramids. Can I, and inside the pyramids are gigantic, gigantic, like 100,000 pounds each of these wooden beams yeah. that separated the different levels. And there's like hundreds of them inside each pyramid what does that have to do with what they this can't figure out how they got in there okay but because who do you think helped with all this slaves stuff? with pulleys like levers yes okay well who else could have helped with it and you're not gonna what are you talking about this could be built by no. aliens. You know that I didn't want to. Hopefully, he wasn't okay. going to hear that. Listen, I'm just saying, let's play, have let's to play go it. Into I aliens. play it. I don't want to. Argue. I, 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 I think look at this. I, built at the same time as Atlantean Pyramid of Giza. Oh, we got to watch this. Okay, now they, you want us to stop talking? So do I. I want to watch. This uses an electromagnetic energy that's incredible. What? And it is apparently 280 feet tall. St. Bernard Parish shrimper Ricky Robin this. says he's experienced the energy firsthand. Oh my God. Robin claims the compass on his boat spun completely around near the area where Jalay pinpointed the tip of the pyramid. And that's not all. Everything will go out huh. on your boat, all your electronics. Like if you was in the Bermuda Triangle. See, that's, that's exactly what we got here. It's actually right here. Robin took Jalay on four excursions to, to the site. He says for years, local fishermen have talked about catching strange square rocks in their nets near the Chandelier Islands. Mm. I thought it was, I, I figured right away, that's pieces of the pyramid. Oh my God. You know? Yeah. And because, yep. first thought, right exactly. around where that compass spun. Maybe. There are other theories about the rocks. Okay, let's One study by Texas A&M in the late 1980s suggests the masses are from shipwrecks or piles of ballast stones from Spanish or French vessels. That's reasonable. The stones may have been dumped overboard yes. to lighten the weight of ships stuck on sandbars Definitely. or entering shallower waters en route to New Orleans. That's true. No. They said that some of the artifacts collected at the site tell a different story. In Charleston, the streets, if you go to Charleston, South Carolina today, yeah, yeah. Those stone streets that are still there were yeah. all left over from the ballast of the ships. They, they built, but it. that's that, very reasonable. Also, that's what this story should be about. Also, they found a but no, not well, also. Let's see which one has more merit. I mean, oh my, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah both so far. This is no, I don't know. this is not. Well, let's hear because he was about to go into the other side of the story. This is architecture. This is not ballast. Mm. This is a piece of architecture that's set like this. This is the outer surface, mm -hmm. and this was a rain gutter. People who believe in the granite mounds say that there is enough proof that something is out there in the water, but how it got built, by who and why, are still a mystery, a mystery that in some respects is beyond explanation. On all those documentaries, on all those documentaries you've watched about the pyramids, have they talked about the famous rain gutters on the pyramids? First, let me not laugh at the famous rain gutter comment. Listen, well, it's that's all what I'm said. saying is what? What is that from? It's no. What I really said is it's a mystery unsolved. They don't know what that is. What is that thing? It certainly doesn't look like the ballast of a ship, unless 
The other side of it is they tore down some building and decided to use that leftover material as the ballast of a ship. That is a possibility. They demolish a building, put it on a ship, go out like 50 miles and dump it. Mm -hmm. That's a possibility. What do you mean? That is like what right, happened. That's, it's, right. That's one of the po it's one one of of, exactly. the possible things. Not the so impossible you just said what I, thing. said what I said. One of the, you said. Yeah, but they, it could be ballast. It could be whatever. Like Pyramid. No, not a pyramid. Okay, I don't know. I'll, let me listen to the rest. The older people? Yeah, we've seen a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a possibility. It could be God knows what. All I know is that somebody right. built a city 12,000 years ago, stuck out in Chandelure. Whether or not they had somebody on their shoulder who flew in with a UFO, I don't know. Why? All whoa, I know whoa, whoa. is that. Oh, my goodness. This is, come I on. just said Dude, that. This is. Is I, this like an April Fool's video? You guys like, are what gonna, is this? You're going to think I saw this ahead of time. And the reason they're going to think it, because did I not just say that? Do you remember I said that before he said that? They're going to unsubscribe. No, no. Do you this remember I said it's po I'm just saying. Th this guy just UFO. said that somebody riding on top of a UFO built an ancient city that's now underwater 12,000 years ago. Well, that's how they built Like the what of part Egypt. of that phrase is more outrageous? All of it is outrageous. None of it makes sense. I like their open-minded people here. A possibility oh. is a good thing to say. He left a whole bunch of granite rocks out there. Jalay has visited the site 44 times. Which I want He to. hopes future dives, modern sonar technology, and satellite imaging will help him unlock some of the secrets now trapped below 300 feet of silt, sand, Paul, and water in Chandelure it. Sound. We, Paul Murphy, Eyewitness News. We can... A former LSU archaeology professor commented on the findings in an article 10 years ago in the Advocate paper. He said that they, rather than something mystical, the site might be an attempt to create an artificial reef in the 1940s by dumping barge no loads of building materials in the water. Okay. The professor Great. declined to be interviewed for our story. That's he already said what he thought. That's, I don't have a problem with that. That makes sense. It all it makes sense. It was the balance of the ship. It was, you know, remainings from buildings that got destroyed. They try to make artificial reefs. Yes, yes, yes. All of those things all are options. All of them are And options. that's how we show that we're open-minded. There's all these yes. options out there. All of but the options. But an ancient civilization all built by somebody riding on a UFO makes no sense. And I want to show you some documentaries, some scientific no, documentaries that's on not the science. Egyptian that's not science. pyramids. No. So listen. But by the way, they are looking for divers to help further understand this. Uh, and we are divers. Dive inside the pyramids? That would be cool. I'll I'll be off. And we are divers that can dive deep. Yes. And we could help and go meet this guy. Totally from New Orleans. Wherever no, he is no, in New no, Orleans. Wait, wait, wait. That guy's cool. I thought we we're talking about the pyramids. Because I know that they dive inside the pyramids in Egypt. The well, actual pyramids, not made up. For TV, yeah, no, I want to. I'm talking about both this and that. No, this is not. So they said he's that's buried cool. in silt. All right, so that's another, another. Maybe we have a lot to do in 2022. We got this. Oh my god, ancient we pyramids, don't got this. and I'm not. Look, on this one, I'm not going to go as far as saying that I don't agree that it's probably either ballast left over from. Some ships that used old building materials. That, Probably. That, that seems like a very reasonable explanation. I like the one where it certainly is uh, logical to dump some stuff down like that. They do it in Florida other time to build artificial reefs. We have um, we have big like, you know, those uh, like sewer pipes or whatever that they're cement. You can actually swim through them. Sure. They put a lot of those down in Florida that have become great habitats. But um, yes, all I that think what sense. I'm saying is that. I'm not offended or I don't think it's totally outrageous to think that there are some ancient things in the world. I don't know if it's not necessarily this yeah. that are unexplainable other than possible help from an alien advanced civilization. No. I'm no. not offended by that, and I think that actually did happen with oh the Egyptian God. pyramids. That's all I'm saying. Wow. And um, I and also I but really I wanted to save this to the end. I'm just so happy you recognize my hat. Nobody's gonna take you seriously you with that it. hat. So that's that's a good thing. We got that going. Um, 
But we you have see, that's that right there. That comment sounded on the verge of disrespect. No, I'm, I'm just, just thinking I'm it just, didn't sound I'm friendly. Just being factual. The like, point I want to high five you and commend how smart you are, and mm -hmm. always say how like look at this was that, handmade. That has never and happened. My friend Janet Pryor hand makes these, and I give them yeah, as a reward huh. in my shark ecology class. I give them as rewards for answering questions right. That's awesome. You wouldn't want a, one of these after my shark. I can get you one I'm if good. you answer a lot of my questions right. I'm good. Uh, but I will say that we have talked about unexplainable objects and things that people have found on their water. And if you're interested in learning more about that, check out this video right here. I hope you enjoy the video and we'll see you on the next one. Bye everybody.